Kia ora, tēlo falava, kirana, greetings. I hope that you're doing well in your bubble and that you're doing okay. It's been three weeks since we've gathered for worship, but we are adaptable and we know that we can meet with God in many different ways because our God, Jesus Christ, bypasses the locked doors, comes to us wherever we are and fills us with the Holy Spirit. I wonder what ways you've been connecting and meeting with God through the lockdown. Today, together, we're going to reflect on Mark chapter 9, listening to God's word so that we can connect. But before we do, let's join together in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Living and loving God, we rejoice that your grace comes to meet with us wherever we are and shines light into whatever darkness we experience. As we take some time to reflect on your word, may we hear you speak and be drawn deeper into your endless love. Take our minds and hearts and direct them to your purposes. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our reading today speaks of the darkness that a family experiences, the struggles of a father and his child, and the trials of life. While the specifics of this particular darkness are different from what each of us experiences, we all know the malignant presence of darkness. As you listen to these words from Mark 9, I invite you to reflect on how you experience trials, and struggles and experience darkness in your life. And now I invite you to reflect and to ask what difference the presence of Jesus and the words of Jesus makes to what you experience. Let's hear from Mark chapter nine. Mark chapter nine, verses 14 to 29. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe, and they ran forward to greet him. He asked them, What are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, You faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. It has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, This kind can only come out through prayer. Thanks be to God for this reading. The final words of this reading, that this kind only comes out through prayer. These words are spoken to a people who have done their very best and failed. These kind only come out through prayer is spoken to a group of people who are confused and perplexed at the situation that they find themselves in. They are spoken to a group of people who are confronted by the darkness and the struggles of life and find that their very best efforts aren't enough to illuminate the darkness that they find themselves in. This kind can only come out through prayer. These are words that Jesus spoke to the disciples and they are words that Jesus speaks into the darkness that we all experience. Prayer changes things. But prayer is something we talk a lot about in the church, 
And it often ends up being thought about as something poetic, polite, and maybe pure. But this isn't the way I see us being taught how to pray through the Bible. When you read the Psalms, you see that most prayers are anything but polite and pure. Most of the prayers are raw, emotional, demanding and accusing. The prayers are often filled with anger and joy, guilt and protest, hope and resentment and faith and doubt. The prayers come from the experience of life. This means that the prayers come from our experience of the darkness. Prayer is born from the situations we find ourselves in, and it expresses a longing for things to be better than they currently are. Prayer comes from the promise. It comes from the promise of God. It comes from a promise that there are good plans and good purposes. And it expresses a desire to see these plans fulfilled. So those struggles you face, whether it's something temporary like a lockdown, or something that's been with you for a long time, or something that's looming large on the horizon, these things come out through prayer. Prayer pierces the darkness that we experience and allows God's light to shine forth so that we can see to the healing and see to the things being made right and see ahead to God's promises being fulfilled. So friends, whatever you're experiencing, whatever questions, struggles, joys and celebrations are in your life, bring them to the Lord in prayer. And as you pray, may you know the presence of Jesus and stand with him in the light. And may you look with him into the future where all things are made right. Grace and peace be with you. Amen.